This week's tutorial focuses on the hardware aspect of running a 3D printer at home. Have you run into this problem? You want to 3D print something that will take several hours, but you also want to use your computer for other things. Figuring out how to solve this problem just got easier. I'm going to show you in this tutorial how you can, for around $45, make your 3D printer wireless and how you can receive notifications when the print is done. If you have an old webcam lying around, you can even see what your printer is doing from any internet connection. How cool is that? Let's get into the details. Many 3D printers work on a serial over USB connection to stream commands to the 3D printer. This is simple and straightforward, but still there are many things that can go wrong. Your computer can go to sleep. You can jiggle the cable a little bit and interrupt the connection. A demanding program on your computer might cause a hiccup in the print process, or you need to access your computer for other work, but it's tied up with this print run. Even though many 3D printers have an SD card function, you still have to walk over to the printer and enter the SD card in. And if something goes wrong or you want a notification when the print is done, using an SD card isn't the best solution. Wouldn't it be nice to just have the printer do its thing while you can do yours? We think so. And so this short free tutorial will show you how. First, you want to make sure you're using a 3D printer that doesn't need any proprietary control software to run. If you want to learn about the different printer types, you can watch our Intro to 3D Printing course on our website by visiting uh, education.honeypoint3d.com. Second, you will need to purchase a small Linux computer called a Raspberry Pi 3 for around $35, a power supply for around $10, and an 8GB micro SD card with adapter for around $10. Many of you will already have these items at home, and this process will work with virtually any Raspberry Pi version, as well as with most micro SD cards. There's a benefit to using the new Raspberry Pi 3 because it already has Wi-Fi on board. Let's jump into the instructions now. Here are the basic instructions which will get you up and running a wireless enabled printer in about 30 minutes. Download the open source print control software OctoPi from octoprint.org and unzip it into an image file. While that's downloading, there are a couple of other pieces of software that you will need to use. Download Win32 Disk Imager from sourceforge.net slash projects slash Win32 Disk Imager uh, for anybody running Windows. If you're running Mac, there are instructions on the OctoPrint and OctoPi website that will help you install the image file on your micro SD card. Do a search for Bonjour for Windows and install Bonjour on your Windows-based computer. You don't really have to do this step, but it makes it easier to log into the Raspberry Pi later on if you do. So insert the micro SD card into your computer using the adapter that came with the micro SD card if needed and run the Win32 Disk Imager program. Select your micro SD card and your image file and click Write. Once that is done, your micro SD card will show up as a new drive on your computer. Before we get to the Pi part, we want to start to get the wireless working so that when the Pi boots up, it automatically joins your wireless network. Navigate to the root of that SD card and open up the octopi-network.txt file. 
Make sure to use WordPad for this and not Notepad because WordPad formats the file more correctly. So you want to scroll down to where your type of wireless network is if you're using WPA2, WEP, or Open. Most people use WPA and WPA2. So you want to get rid of these three hash marks and then put your SSID here. And change this to your password. And then save this file out. The next thing that we want to do after that is to remove the SD card from your computer and insert the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi 3. Connect the Raspberry Pi to your 3D printer using uh, a USB cable and then power up the Raspberry Pi and wait a couple of minutes or so. If you installed Bonjour earlier, navigate to octopi.local in your web browser and you'll see Octoprint. If you did not install Bonjour, then find the IP address that Octopi grabbed and log in that way. Once you've made some decisions about uh, access control that Octopi asks, the first thing that you want to do is click on Settings and choose the serial port and baud rate. You should have only one option for your serial port and the baud rate will be the baud rate at which your printer runs. You can also click on Printer Profiles and change this using the Edit Profile button to be the printer that you have. It's probably good to set this, although you don't really need to, but it's kind of good for visualization so that you can see where your print is printing. It doesn't actually affect the printer or print process in any way, but it is good to set these here. Now go into your slicing program, find a 3D model that you'd like to print, and slice it into a G-code file and save it to your computer. Then go back to Octopi, scroll down and click Upload, select the G-code file that you just created, and it will appear in your library. You click the print button here and you're ready to print. Your printer will start warming up and the print will start and you are done. There are more add-ins for Octopi that allow you to use a webcam, get notifications, and add in more plugins. So you might want to look at the plugin manager to see what is available and click on the get more button to see what other sort of plugins you can add in to make your Octoprint server even better. Thanks for watching this Raspberry Pi video blog and come back next week for another tutorial from Honeypoint 3D.